Hello again guys, I'm back with another BMW. It's quite different to the i3 that hopefully you saw in one of my previous videos. In fact, it's very different to the i3. It is a twin turbo V8 M550i, which I must confess, I didn't even know existed. It costs around 70,000 pounds, which is a quite a bit cheaper than the M5 competition. And this is basically an M5 competition in disguise with a little bit less power. So let's jump inside, have a look around. And I'll let you know what I think. So this is the heart of the beast. It's quite hot, so hopefully you can hear me over the, uh, the sound of the fans. But it's a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8, producing 523 horsepower, 553 foot-pounds of torque. Absolutely insane. So to look at, this could be a diesel 5 series, quite honestly. It's very under the radar. But if you know, there are little styling cues that give away that it's a little bit meaner than your normal 5 series. M badges, of course, lovely kind of bronze finish if you can just about see it through the mud. I love this big grill up front as well. You can probably hear the engine ticking away because it's got quite hot after the little drive I've just gone on. Looking around the back, four exhausts. I need to get a chance to hear this from the outside because from the inside it sounds like an absolute beast. All-wheel drive, BMW's X-Drive system, so it's very well planted, even on a wet day like today. So let's jump inside, get on the road, and see what this thing's really like. So I'm on the road now on the M550i. Apologies that I've got to speak to you through a face mask. It's just the way it is at the moment. Hopefully you can hear me clearly. But to sit in, it's just like most BMWs. It's very comfortable, it's very executive, luxurious go over this speed bump carefully it is quite firm but i do currently have everything set up in sport mode including the suspension which means it revs quite highly before changing up which means you can hear that 4.4 liter v8 you really know it's there when i first got in it i wasn't quite sure but once i put it into sport mode etc it really lets you know that there's something quite special under the bonnet and then you get to an open road like we are now and you put the foot down and if I'm honest, it's a little bit too quick. There's so much torque, it starts to make me feel a little bit unwell, even at the steering wheel. It kind of rips your face off. So we'll give it a little go now, especially with that four wheel drive system. Give it a little go now. Oh my God. It just takes off. It's like a rocket. It absolutely takes off and suddenly you find yourself at the speed limit and you've got to, you've got to back off. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm gonna have a little go again if it straightens up. Ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. There's things flying around in the back. It's so planted as well with the all-wheel drive system, so it lets you just keep going and going even around a bend. Although you do start to feel the weight of the car behind you. I'm not sure how much it weighs, but it's definitely not a light car. So 0 to 60 takes just 3.9 seconds, so no wonder it feels like an absolute weapon when you put the foot down. That's about 0.6 seconds quicker than my Audi R8. Just to put that into perspective, that's how far things have come along in the past 10 years. This thing is quicker than even most Ferraris from 10 years ago. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, that an executive car like this can look completely under the radar. It's the sort of thing maybe if you didn't want your partner to know or the people you work with to know that you had something seriously quick, but when it gets to pulling away from the lights, and you're going to be absolutely anybody in a car like this, I guess, until the M5 competition pulls alongside you, and then it's a different story. So, in front of me, I've got this lovely virtual cockpit, and if I don't know if you can quite see it on the camera, this um, infotainment screen in the centre is absolutely enormous, and I believe, yeah, the whole thing is a touch screen, so I really like that. But the one thing you can't get away from, because everything else in terms of the usability and the comfort, it is exactly what you expect from BMW. It's all pretty much fantastic. The quality of the leather is great. You can tell that this is a £70,000 car. They've not cut any corners. But one thing you can't get away from is that performance. So if I just shift down, put it in manual mode for a second, and we have another little go just before we get too close to the uh, 60 mile an hour speed limit. Elsewhere in the cabin, there's a touch screen down here for the air conditioning, etc. Let's turn that up. It's a little bit fiddly to begin with to get used to, but I'm sure if you've been driving this car more than a week, it'll be completely intuitive. But me just jumping in it, I'm a little bit lost, but that's absolutely fine. 
It doesn't feel enormous when you're behind the wheel. I don't worry that I'm about to drive into everyone or hit every curb, which is again a good thing. On the flip side, if I turn the car to Eco Pro mode, the engine goes completely tame. Throttle response is reduced, obviously. The suspension is softer. And you could, just like the looks, you could be driving a diesel 5 series. Really changes the character. I've got no idea what a car like this, what kind of MPG a car like this manages. The tank is almost full and it's saying a range, well, it went itself, it was saying a range of about 190. So, I mean, in Eco Pro mode, possibly you're going to get that higher, but I don't even think they bother showing you your MPG in a car like this. It's got every other feature that you would expect CarPlay, adaptive cruise control, lane assist. 360 degree reversing camera so taking a closer look around the interior of the m550i again i mentioned that lovely virtual cockpit and that enormous central infotainment and then another screen here you can see this is a touch screen for the air conditioning Ooh, did not want to do that down there i've got a wireless charging but it's the ultimate test does the phone fit Yes, yes, it does fit. There you go. That's a plus of uh, the other BMWs I've tested so far, that that wireless charging fit actually fits the iPhone 10 and 11. So that's good news. Otherwise, these really nice quilted leather seats all the way back. You could fit five people in here in absolute comfort. Let's see if we can give the engine a little rev. See, that's the one thing you are missing from the i3 that I drove earlier. You cannot make a noise like that with it. That sounds great, doesn't it? There we go guys, that was the BMW M550i. Quick blast up and down the road. First time I've had a go in a car like this. As I mentioned, I didn't really know that this car existed, especially in the UK. I think it has just come to the UK. It's getting quite windy now, hopefully you can still hear me. But this is the definition of a sleeper. Looks like any other executive company car with a few subtle little differences just so you know it's a tiny bit sporty if you know what to look out for but it goes it goes like anything so the other bmw just pulls out there but i'm really excited to jump into the next one really enjoyed that one a little bit too fast for my liking i think it would get old accelerating over and over again especially on your bank account having to fill it up very impressive car nonetheless.